The wait felt like an eternity, but season two is finally here. And with it comes five brand new spots for us to explore. But are they worth landing at? Let's find out. What up guys, I hope you're having a wonderful time enjoying the new season. My name is Christoph and in this video, we're gonna be covering new named locations that just got added. To make it very straightforward for you guys, we're gonna rate each one on a scale from one to 10. So get ready, we're in for a ride. And as always, our question of the day, out of all the five new locations, which one is your personal favorite? For me, I would probably say it's the yacht. I think it's kind of fun and fancy. Let me know what you guys think down below. And if you guys haven't already, make sure to check out ProGuides.com, use the description link below. There you'll find pro coaches right now, online, ready to help you win more games. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, first up, taking over the middle island is the agency. Talk about an upgrade, guys, because compared to the dinghy houses of last season, this place is absolutely loaded. We counted a little over 20 chests, not to mention all the floor loot scattered around. Land here and you'll get kitted in no time. But that's if you survive. Being smack dab in the center of the map makes this spot very, very desirable. People love landing near the center since it takes rotating out of the question for most games with a ton of loot as well. We see this spot becoming something like the next Tilted Towers. Whether or not you guys enjoy that type of hectic action is totally up to you. I know for myself, I just love landing in and just obliterating, but that's just me. I love being aggro and stuff like that. In terms of materials as well, things could be better. The whole POI is pretty much indoors and there isn't a lot of furniture to harvest. While there are a few trees on the outskirts of the island, all the loot is indoors, so materials end up being something you gotta go out of your way to acquire. But it's not just loot and materials this spot has, it's got new features as well. Epic Games added a ton of interesting stuff, like a bunch of locked doors and large loot crates around that require ID scans to open. You guys probably already know that. But of course, hidden behind these locked areas is a bunch of dope loot that is just waiting for you. So the question is, how do you get past the ID scans? Well, there are a couple of red old-timey telephone booths located on the outside of the building, one by the south of the building just past the helipad, and one right to the side of the north entrance. If you hop inside either of these phone booths, you'll change outfits and turn into a member of the Ghost Faction, which then gives you the ability to get past the ID scans. I think the locked weapon crates we opened gave us epic and legendary quality weapons, along with two healing items as well, so that's kind of the quality of loot you can expect from these new locked chests. Okay, so I feel like I'm an infomercial saying this, but that's not all, folks. The agency also has a bunch of enemy AI that wander around called henchmen but you can kill them pretty quickly for a weapon, ammo, and a bit of material. And if you find a guy walking around with a drum gun, watch yourself. He's named Midas. He's the boss of this joint and he hits like a truck. If you guys eliminate him, you'll end up with an OP drum gun for yourself. And he also drops a key card, a very valuable key card. Pick that up and use it to guide yourself down to the vault downstairs. Inside are a couple of regular chests, two big ones that you don't need an ID to scan open, and even a supply drop. Getting this loot down here is a must before you leave, but it's up to you whether you want to fight for the key card yourself or just wait to ambush an opponent that goes for it. Man, this place gives me serious evil movie villain vibes, which I kind of love. But honestly, with the central location and plentiful loot, we're giving this spot an eight out of 10. It's fantastic, but expect it to be contested here every single match. Okay, next up, it is my favorite spot, the yacht. While I love the design aspects, the owners of this vessel really skimped out on the loot though. We counted only around eight chests, which is okay for a solo or maybe even a duo drop spot, but as a squad, you're gonna be struggling and fighting over who gets what. In terms of material, there's a decent bit of furniture and fixtures you can whack away at for mats, but honestly, it's not a whole lot. You are on a boat after all, so it's not like you're gonna have any trees or cars for you to hit at. So to get full on mats, you're gonna have to rotate out. We found a pretty good spot just south of the yacht with a bunch of washed up vehicles and juicy rocks you can break to fill up on those much needed mats. But just like with the other new locations, you'll find those henchmen and a boss there as well. The boss's name here is named Meowsels. I hope I said that right. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If you manage to find him and eliminate him, he drops a mythic heavy assault rifle plus the yacht keycard. The rifle name is actually hilarious too. It's called Meowsels Piao Piao Rifle. 
which is a pretty ridiculous name for an item. All jokes aside though, this gun does not seem to be worth going for, at least when compared to the other new mythic items. The vault's on the bottom deck near the north side of the ship, and once you've gotten the keycard, you can open it for a supply drop and a couple of those big crates. And talk about a remote location, because this yacht is super, super far away on its own. Unfortunately, that's a big downside with how random circles can be in this game. Although it does come with some boats on the bottom deck you can use to rotate out with if you want. I guess it's not the worst that it could be, but overall, we're giving the yacht a 6 out of 10. All right, guys, now onto the east side of the map, just south of Dirty Docks, is the Grotto. Our first impressions were like, hey, did Epic just add the Batcave of Fortnite? For real though, this underground lair was super interesting to explore, and it reminds me of Batman. In terms of loot, we counted 10 chests here, although we might have missed a couple. Materials are all right, nothing special really. There's a bunch of random stuff you can destroy, but it doesn't give you much. You'll definitely have to explore the surrounding areas if you want to fill up on mats. So, the boss here is named Brutus, and if you manage to take him out, he drops a mythic minigun. I feel like this is going to be such a popular spot because of this weapon. When we were using it in our matches, it was just shredding everything. I never thought it was too powerful in the past, but man, this felt super strong. Honestly, I cannot believe they added it back into the game. But yeah, get his keycard, go to the vault near the middle of the cave, you can open it up for those four big crates. Rotating out is somewhat easier here too. There's a boat on the shore side, and with those two big hole entrances, the bottom one is a wind tunnel you can sort of use for a quick escape. Overall, the Grotto is getting a 7 out of 10 from us, but perhaps it's a 10 out of 10 for you. Let us know what you guys think of it down below. Okay, so on to the next one. Explore the shore southwest of Slurpee Swamps, and you'll discover the rig. This might be my second favorite spot they've added in terms of design. I just love the aesthetic. It feels so unlike Fortnite that it adds a new feel to the game. But anyway, how does it match up? Well, in terms of loot, this oil rig hit the mother load. We counted over 20 chests, so more than Agency had, with a bunch of floor loot as well. You won't be running out of spots to hit up here. And when it comes to materials, I think the rig is among the best we've seen so far. It's got high health metal objects to farm up, plus a lot of small objects to quickly fill up on. And while most of it is metal, I mean, just look to the north. There are so many trees and bricks in the swampy area, it's pretty much impossible to leave with empty mats. And do you like explosions? Cause the rig is boom boom central. There are these new red propane tanks you can pick up and toss around, and if you shoot them, they explode and deal a small chunk of damage to anyone around them. These don't seem that useful, but they're kind of fun. Instead, they're kind of like those gimmicky explosive gas pumps introduced last season. But at the same time, I know how creative people can get with this game, so I'm sure there'll be some weird innovation for people to use. And going along with the explosive theme, the boss here is Tien Tina. Eliminate her and you'll get a Boombo and a key card. Don't worry, I had a small panic attack when I heard the Boombo was back, but apparently it's nerfed, so I think we'll be all right. Anyway, you can find the vault on the north facing side, near the bottom next to some stairs. We haven't gotten to open it up just yet, so let us know what you find inside. Overall, the rig might be the best spot so far. It has a ton going for it, like great loot, plenty of mats, slippery swamps close by for quick health top-ups, and the frickin' Boombo as well. So we're giving this place a 9 out of 10. Definitely explore the spot when you get the chance. Okay guys, finally located to the northwest by the cluster of small islands is the shark. Again, I'm a massive fan of the design here. The cave entrance at the bottom depicts a menacing looking shark. And on top of that, there's a really chill house with a beautiful beachside. But in terms of loot, we counted 11 chests and one ice freezer by the pool. A bit better than the yacht was, but scattered over a much larger area, which makes looting this spot as a solo player kind of a pain, at least in my opinion. I guess the positive here is material availability. There are so many trees and rocks on the shore, you'll never leave empty-handed. Metal is less bountiful, but you can find small bits here and there, especially with the slurp kegs. There are a few on the southwest part of the shore as well, and some more hidden inside the house. The boss here is named Sky, and if you kill him, you'll get their killer assault rifle. Compared to a gold scar, it does more damage per bullet and has a much, much faster fire rate. Last season, the AUG was the end-all, be-all rifle. This season, we think it'll be the Mythic AR. Apparently, there's a Mythic Grappler you can also get from Sky here. We haven't seen it just yet, but if you have, let us know in the comments below. We're curious. 
Again, there's a vault located all the way downstairs, but we haven't opened it up yet. I'm sure it's just something like those few weapon crates and chests. Overall, the shark is receiving a solid 7 out of 10 from us. We could see it being an ideal duo dropping spot if you're looking for a balanced mix of resources. Okay guys, to recap really quickly, the new POIs in order of best to worst are at number 1, the rig. It has tons of loot, lots of materials nearby, and the boom bow for the boss drop. To us, this was just the best new spot. Then in second place is the agency. It has tons of loot, a fantastic central location to make rotating easier, but it does lack a little bit in the materials department. It makes up for it though with the drum gun boss drop. Okay, and in third place we have the Grotto, which might not have the best loot, but the upside is that you can fight indoors without attracting too much attention. And it has that insane minigun you can pick up from the boss as well. Okay, tied with the Grotto we have the Shark, which has a less powerful weapon from our initial findings at least, but it has a lot more balanced materials. Okay, and lastly we have, unfortunately, my favorite, the Yacht, which kills it in design, but it's just too small to be worthwhile. And the heavy assault rifle pales in comparison to the rest of the mythic loadout, so this location takes the bottom spot. Of course, the better the location is, the more players it'll attract, so landing at the rig won't necessarily mean easier wins. If you want fast and easy wins, land in old spots since everyone and their dog is going to be checking out these new ones for a while. That's it for the video guys, thank you so much for watching. And be sure to like the video if you found it helpful. We've got a lot of content planned for you guys for season two, so if you feel like tagging along this journey, then subscribe and turn on notifications. Once again, if you guys want to get better at Fortnite, make sure to click that description link below and go find your pro coach right now. Once again, it's been Kristoff, thank you so much for watching and good luck in your next few games.